Time is here and we're really excited to be going to Tad Lads. I think there's about 10 or 12 of us heading down to the property to spend the weekend. Tad has an amazing itinerary for us. We are going to be learning about hunting, uh, turkey hunting, food plotting, tree stands, which I'm terrified of, and also uh, looking forward to some great meals and building new friendships. So we've come to Tad Lads this weekend and it's the first time that I have gotten a chance to meet some of these ladies and you know we're going to so it's going to be fun to do a little bit of bonding learning more about each other and we're going to be taking some classes and learning more about hunting and techniques and you know all these different things and it's just going to be a blast this weekend. We've arrived now at Tad Lads and he's given us an evening to just kind of unwind get unpacked we had a great dinner. Everybody got to meet all the staff and just get comfortable with each other and then try to discuss about some of the things we may want to learn or add to the itinerary he, he has planned for us. My name's Michelle Ralston. I am the Fayette County chapter leader and the secretary for wildlife women. I'm from Lexington, Kentucky, born and raised. What I like about wildlife women is being able to get out and do things that I have never done before and to push myself beyond what I think I can do. I've started hunting, I've been fishing, we just bought some land and you know I'm learning to take care of it on my own. We're going to learn how to properly set up a ground blind and or how to find a good hunting area and also how to get into those areas without spreading our scent around and maybe scaring off animals. I want to talk to you briefly about the stand placement. And it's going to be casual. I want you to ask questions if you want to stop me right where I'm at. I mean, that's what this is all about. I'm trying to make you guys better hunters. And stuff you can take with you, hopefully. We put up a lot of stands. I put up a lot of stands. <laughs> and it's all trial and error. Everything that, uh, all my knowledge is from trial and error. Feedback from my guests sitting in those stands during the hunt. But, uh, I mean, it's... Take it's it's probably, uh, I mean, think about it. Think about all the sweating, all the ticks, the chickers, all the cameras that you hung, the times you went in and out, all the mineral sites you replenished. Everything comes down to getting that shot. And putting this thing right here in the correct place is the only way to accomplish that. So the first thing that I felt like was a huge revelation for me was deer hunting. Um, I hit them all the time with my car and I did not realize how hard it is to get one actually up in the stands. So I'm telling you I go to the I think you guys know I'm pretty meticulous. <laughs> I put USB ports on your nightstand. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to go to town or shower. <laughs> I try to pride myself on thinking of everything I can think of. I mean right down I won't let my guys put the clamps on the front of the stand because I don't want a hunter to be climbing up in the morning and oh, catch no, something no. yet on that little hook. I always take the time to make them turn around and put the hooks on the back. Tad taught us the importance of our scent. He taught us the importance of not crossing the path of the deer and it, how important it is to actually take the long way around, not the shortcut. Uh, how important it was to be in way before uh, shooting line. Where would you select a stand at in this food plot based upon these factors with, the with this or guy coming right here? The southeast. If that's the travel. Wind be blowing across the plot just like this. That's what you count on. You think it up here? That's where I would. Okay. I've already learned that one of the things I did in my year of zero harvest was take shortcuts and that was one of the very first things that I changed hunting this year after having these seminars at Tad Lads. Here's what most hunters will do and what we try not to do. It's tough. I mean when we're hunting people that they're eager, they're ready to get in the stand, you know what I mean? Let's say this is where you park. How are you going to get into that? Most people want to come right to the plot and walk right across. 
some people will, will come in yeah, and do that. What I'm saying is, if this is the only area you can park, you need to take the time. I've been guilty in my past hunting experiences to not correctly enter a stand. March is the best time to do it. There's no leaves, you can see it. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But taking that extra time, I mean, to cat eye you in, you know, and not only that, the thermals too. I mean, we're all hunters. I mean, I can talk about predominant wind all I want to talk about predominant wind, but the wind's going to change. Thermals are going to rise, thermals are going to fall. Then where you guys hunt in the mountains of eastern Kentucky, it's a lot more predominant than it is here. I had no idea that you had to be totally scent free. That would not work for me. Um, for one, I have hair product, I have makeup, and my clothes probably smell like April Fresh. <laughs> so I've been a bow hunter for eight years. Unfortunately, I'm that girl that just wants somebody to show me how to do it. And I've not researched, I've not learned how to set up my bow, I've not learned the components of the bow, and we're getting ready to have a seminar by Craig White that's gonna teach us exactly that. Opening day is a finish line to a race that started months prior. A race consisting of dedication, determination, and preparation. Resulting in blood, sweat, and anticipation. So when that moment of opportunity presents itself, you can draw peacefully, knowing your time, energy, and preparation started with Rackology. Everything you need, all in one bag. Here's normal internet speed. Here's the broadband difference. Average speed, broadband. Not enough speed, broadband speed. With broadband from Thacker Grigsby Communications, everything's different. Video streams with no buffering, music and photos fly, gaming gets real, and nobody's left hanging. Experience the broadband difference. Contact Thacker Grigsby Communications and TVS Cable today. Ted also wanted us to understand the importance of food plotting and he invited Jeremy and Jeremy from Deer 30 to come in and talk to us about minerals and how to keep a healthy herd and plotting and, and all the good things that are important for the deer to grow. Deer 30 Mineral, uh, we're out of Western Kentucky also. Uh, I just live right up the road in Madisonville. Uh, what's the furthest you guys? Southeast. I'm, I'm right next to Virginia. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. probably went that one. Southeast. Yeah. I'm the furthest. So at Tad Lads, we're also learning about mineral plots. We've had uh, two Jeremy's from Deer 30 Mineral come in, and they are actually telling us how to do food plots to help our herd grow and to get bigger antlers even and to become healthier so that it'll be better for us to harvest an animal later on. You know, salt blocks and lucky buck and everything, and that's fine, that's great and everything, but when you start looking at what you're actually feeding your deer with salt blocks, which is just 100% salt, and there's nothing wrong with that, deer like salt, that's great, but we wanted to do something a little different. Where we could so we, we actually got to look at the Deer 30 Mineral product and smell it, and I actually thought I could eat it myself. It smelled amazing. Uh, Michelle won a bag of it and was going to give it a try. Uh, unfortunately, this is something I've never done. I, I've never put out a food plot, and I'm looking forward to giving all these minerals a try. Okay. You know, get it down to the bare dirt, and especially right now with it being as dry and hot as it is, take a little water bottle with you okay. and just sprinkle it a little bit so it saturates into the dirt and it stays there, okay. and they don't just come by and eat it off the top of the ground before it gets. Right, and you don't get to put that whole bag out in three by three, right? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, no yeah. I personally just, I mean, it's probably because I've got limited, uh, unlimited access to that. I put two to three bags per site 
to start one. After that, start on the yeah. After that, it depends on kind of maintenance. Yeah, one. After that, we usually go four, four weeks, five weeks, depending on how much rain you get, how heavy the dew is, mm -hmm. how much activity you have on it. Mm -hmm. um, we go back with another bag and fresh them up once a month. Yeah. Which that gives you a good chance too to go check your trail cameras while you're out there freshening it up. You can see what you've got coming in, how often they're coming in, and then you can go by, maybe I need to put a little more, take them off, whatever you want to do. Deer 30, they showed us their minerals and different things about making food plots. Uh, they passed around the minerals and we got to smell them and they really did smell really good that day. Um, one of them smelled like molasses, almost like a cookie. So Bridget was right. They almost smelled good enough to eat that day. <laughs> if you don't have to have a water source on your on your property, but if you did and you could get any mineral right there close to it, I mean, that's, that's prime time. I usually hunt on a point because there's a valley and there's a spring that runs down in that valley. Yeah. And they, they will stand down there and come up any well, hillside. Well, just find, just find the trail that they're, that they're using and just, I'd say, hold it off 15, 20 yards from your water source. Clear you off the spot. You know, find a tree. Like I say, it's lo location is key. Right. Find a tree that you can hunt out of or a good spot to put a, a blind or whatever. And then put your mineral out right there. Especially if you plan on doing early season bow hunting. As early as our season comes in here in Kentucky, I mean, they're on that summer pattern still. And, and if they're coming through it a couple weeks before, they're going to be still hitting it yeah. early above it. I've got a friend, he's killed numerous big velvet bucks. I'm like, I'm usually hunting on other people's property, so food plotting is not something that I've been able to do. Hopefully in the future I'll have my own farm or we'll have a wildlife women farm and we'll be able to put out these minerals. Tucked in the mountains of eastern Kentucky, perfect for a quiet weekend getaway or a fun-filled group adventure, visit us at Big Branch Cabins. Bring your ATV for some beautiful, scenic mountain riding. Our small cabin sleeps up to four people and the big cabin sleeps up to ten, with another cabin coming soon. So bring the entire family. There's tons of parking and plenty of room to enjoy the outdoors. Cook out, play cornhole, hike, fish, or simply relax. Come visit us at Big Branch Cabin Rentals, nestled in the heart of Knott County. Hey, this is James Sam, Kentucky Bugles Struts Outfitter. This is Brandon Thomas. We're the co-owners here at Kentucky Bugles and Struts. It's that time of year again. Um, when it's a beautiful day here on one of our uh, private properties we've got to hunt, it's probably got about 75,000 acres on it. And if you got the chance to hunt Kentucky Elk this fall, whoo, man, are we excited. Give us a chance. Give us a call. Talk to Brandon at 606-634-7640. He does all our booking. He does an outstanding job. Good luck. We hope to see you. But, man, we're ready to make friends for life. Tracking the blood trail was one of the things that we really got a lot of information about. It's been one of my least favorite parts of an animal. I want it to drop right where I shoot it because I don't want to spend all day looking for it. But we were very blessed to be able to get some pointers and tips on uh, what to look for, how to make that process go a little quicker. And I am happy to say I tracked my first animal and found it all along this year. I don't know, uh, 44 years old, been hunting most of my life. I was about 30 plus years. I've been in the woods a long time. Started out just pretty much as a kid, sitting inside my dad and deer stand. 12 years old, I was in the woods by myself. So a lot of it I learned from my mistakes. <laughs> So we're going to go over a little bit of those today. How many of y'all have had blood trial in here? Was it recovery? Not recovery, I mean. <laughs> was it easy trail? Was it hard? <laughs> we get different situations with blood trail. And those guys, we had to, most of the time, we're the first ones. We're like detectives. We've got to, if it's a good hit, we got to know what the arrow looked like, where they, how far they was. There's so many things that come in effect. We 
basically tell our hunters, uh, don't get out of the tree. Especially if it's a bad hit, you can knock that deer and bust them another mile. We've seen the guys that snow right in here. Of course, when you get back this way a little bit further, and Ryan talked about this last night, you got the liver and kidneys. It's a lethal shot, and they may go a little bit further. Or a heart shot. You take their heart out of the equation, especially a pass through shot, you bleed out both sides. All that so anyhow that's just kind of looking and we'll go over this a little bit more as I get into these into this right here and shot placement. Anytime you're hunting shot placement or, or whatever that animal is you're after you get patient I've done it. That's what I say learn from your mistakes. So make sure you got a good shot. When a shot happens how many things are going on? All y'all hunted knows your heart rate's oh, I'd do it with a doe. Yeah. I'll be honest I'd do it with a doe. I get excited to kill it up. I mean, if you're not getting excited, you're almost you're going to have to push on. But give them a little bit of time. Uh, we said patience is a virtue. I mean, you got to just be patient with it as bad as you want to get on that animal and go after it. Give it some time. And I don't know if it's scientific or how you do it. A lot of times they'll pretty well stay on a path where they're going. And sometimes, like we were talking about, they might go back to their bed in there and get on a trail and go. A lot of times we'll hit a trail or a road bed or something. Something's easy for them to get through. Because they're hurt, and a lot of times they know that they're done for. You know that's why they'll go to. And I found them and stuck to the rapid fire. They're going right down. It's not going to kill them immediately, but they can't walk. If you can get another arrow bullet in, kill them. Not going to get them down. First year, I killed a, a two spine, and then I had to back off and shoot it again. It's hard to do what you think. It's hard to do what you think. Yeah. The favorite thing that I learned this weekend when we were at Tad Lads was um, about tracking when you shoot a deer and all the different blood spatters that you can find and tracking and the best way to make sure that you don't miss the blood trails as you're going through there. And it was just really interesting because that is something that I was always afraid of was that I would shoot something and then not be able to track it down, you know, and either t finish it or be able to find my deer. I learned a lot about tracking, and I also know that I will not be doing that. There is no way that I'm going to go all hours of the night just looking for blood on the ground. Tina Thornsberry, the owner and guide of Beaver Creek Outfitters in beautiful Knott County, Kentucky, the elk capital of the East. If you were lucky and you drew a tag to come hunt in Kentucky, give us a call at 606-369-6594. Let Justin Ross, Brad, or myself help you fill your tag of a lifetime. has Ryan from Buckmasters coming to teach us a little bit about how to make guns pleasurable. This is one of the seminars that I'm looking most forward to because I was scared to death of any type of gun and that was one of the reasons I started Wildlife Women. All right, well, uh, start off by saying my name is Ryan Knopfsinger. I've met everybody here. I uh, had a great time talking with y'all so far. 
Uh, I wanted to say out of the gate that I'm a professional hunter, a professional archer, a professional gun, uh, marksman, and if you believe that, I'm a professional booker. <laughs> the thing is, is I'm not a pro at any of this. Uh, my claim to fame, in my opinion, I'm born again believer of Jesus Christ, and uh, you know, uh, He's blessed me with some talents and skills, but one thing He's blessed me with is a heart to help people. So this is out of my comfort zone right here. I semi feel like I've got buck fever, I've got both shakes in front. Yeah, some of the guns, uh, rifles or shotguns, can kick pretty hard. And especially with somebody like me, I have a bad right shoulder. So I want to protect my shoulder. I don't want to destroy it any more than what it is. So I learned a lot about the recoil pads and how to safely use a shotgun and even a rifle. But the thing is, is y'all may have seen the meme on, face, on Facebook that says, like, uh, you know, if guns are dangerous, how does anyone walk out of a gun show a lot? The gun themselves is not dangerous if you're educated on them and uh, you know you're responsible with them. And so, first of all, I know everybody's going to go shoot. I just pray everybody emphasizes the whole safety, you know, because, you know, the accidents, they happen, you know, guns are dangerous in hands of criminals, people want to do damage. They're uh, dangerous in the hands of inexperienced people with guns. But guess what? Even accidents happen with people that have been around guns all their lives and they get careless and different things. I, uh, growing up here in Kentucky, I actually had one of, uh, one of my classmates, his dad, who'd been hunting forever, I actually got shot in the face with a shotgun by a guy that had bird hunted forever, you know, and so accidents happen. So, but one thing that happened to me as a, uh, as a child, we didn't have the bells and whistles that we do for shooting guns whenever I was young. And, uh, you know, we weren't rich. Uh, my dad, I'd like to say, he, he made a lot of mistakes in teaching me about guns, but actually he didn't. He didn't have that much to work with. But basically, you know, I had a 30-30. I started uh, deer hunting whenever I was six. And to go shoot, basically we were propped up on a tailgate because that was about my height. And uh, I shot the gun for the first time. Up till then, I'd shot primarily BB guns and 22s. 22s aren't very loud. But I was not expecting. We were shooting some Hornady ammo out of that 243, and we found every deer. We ran out of that ammunition. All I could find was another manufacturer. I put it, uh, he shot a few more deer, and we never recovered. So due to that, and they were good shots, I, mean, I had it on video. So the thing is, is I ended up uh, asking a friend of mine whose wife shot a 7 millimeter odd 8. And I said, you know, could we borrow that? Now she is shooting. She's shooting hogs with the 7 eight, you know, large, uh, well, they're southern deer, they're not quite as big as these here. But anyway, one day, and it sounded like a war, and uh, she had shot, I think it was four pigs and, and a buck and a doe in one sit that morning. I mean, she was just, uh, but anyway, the 7 eight can get it done, and again, it's a kid-friendly or a new shooter or anybody. In fact, uh, it's, it's a good caliber. And the editor of one of our, we have three magazines of Buckmasters. We have Buckmaster White Tail Magazine, we have Gun Hunter, which is all about hunting guns, and then we have Rack, which is all about the biggest and best deer, you know, that have been taken across the country. We're getting ready to have a great seminar by Michael Leachman on turkey hunting. Michael is fantastic with dead man turkey calls, and he's going to teach us how to use slate calls and box calls. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. All right, ready. Basically, I'm going to go over just some basic things of turkey hunting. Uh, I work actually uh, in for Danny Game Calls. Uh, I'm not push. I'm going to push their product today because I think they got a. I mean, we got products for everybody. Uh, we get everything from turkey calls, duck calls, deer grunts, mouth calls. Some of the best uh, cover scent I think is on the market right now. I'm terrible at turkey calling. <laughs> With a slate call, with a mouth call, with any call. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Well, that was my practice item for the year. Stuff like that. Use a piece of just what you get at a hardware store, this little right. brittle pad, right. and get it get it really good. I can, and we actually have a, a striker that, you know how your slate calls will get wet? We have designed a striker. No matter if I can pour water on this call right now, and it'll work with this striker. Oh. It will work. They come out with it last year, and like I said, that's all, that turkey is one of their main things. So anytime, I'll get with the mouth calls here in a minute. Now, we were also told to mark where we put our fingers. Yeah. Because 
Different parts of the call of the pot, whether you use a glass or aluminum, everybody's different. We have a glass call. I don't like the glass call. I like this. Michael Leachman is actually a staffer with Dead Man Calls. So he's brought in some calls to show us and to use. This call away, this one of ours, called a mudslide. I'm not a box call fan, but sometimes they will answer to it. And you can do several different things while you're holding it. It's louder, the pitch, the vibration of it, they can hear it. I had one this year on the youth hunt, he, he answered to it. But he wouldn't answer to another call, but he answered to that. Ten minutes later, put pop a mouth call in, now he's answering to that. It just kind of depends on the mood that they're in and all that. I took a youth this year, and uh, we got in there that morning. When you get in early in the morning, try to get in as early as you can. Try to get in there as early as you possibly can. Get set up, because in the early spring, especially you see, we still don't have very many leaves on the tree. They can see you coming. You're allowed to bust them off the roost. Try not to do that. Get set up, so when you're in the blind, get you a... Tad had all kinds of prizes for us to encourage the girls and, and reward us for our hard work, and we were really excited about all of them. He showed us this garage full of things that his sponsors had given us and he had, he had gotten for us. Melissa won this uh, turkey call, but I've got my eyes on that X stand tree stand. Of all the girls there, I won the door prize, and it was a dead man's call, Buck's call. So I learned a little bit about turkey calling. Um, I'll try it sometime. The X Stand brand stands for something. It's something you can't put a price tag on, and it sets them apart from the rest of the industry. It was built from the ground up with a genuine work ethic that doesn't cut corners. X Stand products are world class and use hunt safe technologies to go above and beyond normal safety standards. Just like the revolutionary technology of the JAW safety system, X Stand products stand for safety and quality. X Stand, simply smarter, simply safer. After we had the seminars, we broke for lunch, and then after lunch, we all loaded up and went to the shooting range. Ryan from Buckmasters, he was going to show us how to uh, shoot with the, the different recoil pads and shoot long distance, and um, we got to shoot uh, our rifles in competition. Top. I'm going to sit down and shoot. You on a backpack? What for? I'm going to shoot the deer. Well, I didn't throw it up there, he heard No, he got away. Missed fire. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What'd he say? Larry said he's running off. <laughs> So we walked down to the range. I look like a tactical girl because I've got on camouflage pants and a tank top, but I didn't have any of my guns or anything in a case. So I've got a shotgun on one shoulder, a rifle on the other shoulder, I've got a pistol on my waistband, and I'm carrying another pistol case and a bag full of ammo. Pull the hammer back. Yeah. 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 The top white. Yeah, top All right, fire in the hole. Pull that snug into your shoulder. Look inside of it. Squeeze it. Take a deep breath, exhale, and squeeze. It doubles, see? Shoot the center dot. That's hard to do. 
Range is hot. The longest distance we shot when competition was 200 yards, and I won that shoot. And that's when I won a trail cam from Tad Leds. He had different prizes for all the ladies and then for the different competitions, and I won that one and came away a winner that day with a nice trail cam. It is hotter than Hades here at Tad Lads. We were all sweating and exhausted from a fun-filled day of learning and shooting, and Miss Tina has got us an amazing supper planned. Do a deer. Yeah, but Mason's vlogging. You know. It's a bit different. Do you all dress the deer for these men that come? Well, or do they dress them? Make some extra money out of it. Not only was everything absolutely perfect in in our in our environment and our camping and the seminars and all the education we got but the food here is out of this world we had steak dinners better than anything i have ever had in a restaurant we got up this morning and tad lad decided that we were going to go for a ride and view the farm he's got there where the cabins are at and so we all loaded up in the side by sides and we came down to a different area and he stopped, and then when he got out, he just told us in that we were going to go up and down into the different tree stands there he had. And the ones that had never been in a tree stand were going to climb up into it, get over their fears, and learn how to use the safety harnesses and sit in the tree stand. The ladies that had never done this before, uh, we had them to do that. The ones of us who had hunted out of deer stands we sat back and cheered them on, so that was exciting to get to watch them climb up into a stand and overcome their fear of heights and enjoy sitting in a deer stand and looking down with, that, with their eyes open. Hey, the point of this uh, whole endeavor was to learn and to share experiences and whatnot, and Bridget has a small fear of heights. Small fear. <laughs> Maybe we'll up that just a little bit, like in the extreme fear. <laughs> she's a, she's a, a blind hunter, and there's nothing wrong with that. But these X stand tree stands that we're about to climb are the safest, most comfortable tree stands on the market. I've got an X stand safety harness that I use as well, so we're going to get this on Bridget. Real easy to get into. Strap around the leg. It's that simple. Nothing complicated. Two straps. Let me have it right here. Okay. Lock you down a little bit. There we go. Lock tight? down real good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Have you checked that for a while? As y'all know, I'm an archer, and I'm an archer from a ground blind. I am absolutely terrified of tree stands. Tad has decided he's going to take that task and try to turn me into a tree stand hunter. Huh? Uh, <laughs> the bales on these right here, wasps love to live them. We check all these stands before we mm -hmm. even put a hunter in them to make sure we don't have that issue. All right, girl. You're up the back. Come on. You can do this. Go, Bridget. Go, go, go. go. <laughs> you Basically got this. line on every tree at Tad Lad with Kentucky White Tad introduced us girls to X stand tree stands. And I had decided that I was going to give it a try today with Tad and the girls by my side. One of the things that, that Wildlife Women is about is facing your fears. So today's the day, and I am going to climb a tree stand, and I'm going to be happy about it. And this is a simple press at night, and all you have to do is slide your tether in here. All right. Tether is What's the tether? The tether is the strip that hangs in the back that gives you maneuverability once you are in the stand. All right. Tighten her down. Now with the prussic, this is the story I was telling you guys the other night. All right, you have to slide the prussic as you go because it's designed for you, if you fall, to cinch so you don't. And that's what Ron was doing. He was trying to climb without sliding this thing. Bridge, show him. Go up a few steps here. 
I'm going to have her do it without sliding the prussic just to show you what he was doing. You might want on the other side in case I throw it. <laughs> no, you'll be all right. Go on up a few. Now watch what happens here. Keep going. It's going to hold you. Keep going. You see? <laughs> now I come back down. Ron was pulling and tugging, and I was like, what in the world is he doing? <laughs> All right, now put your hand right here. Then you got to show me what to do again, because I was totally blacked out about that moment. <laughs> You're just going to climb and slide that up as you go. So take a couple steps, stop, and slide. Uh -huh. and then you always want tension on it so you can actually slide that knot with you. That's why we've got a paw line here. I'm going to be right behind you. It's going to be all right. Okay. All right. See how safe? Doesn't this stand feel safe Yeah, secure? it feels very strong. <laughs> and secure. My hands just feel really sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> Put that thing up or pull the cable. All right, now grab the line. There you go. There's no bottom. Slide it up. Yeah. There you go. Now go about three more steps. You're all right. I'm right now. You cannot fall out of this. I'd fall you're a lady. You uh, don't fall. Slide like a little bit. Slide a little bit more. Right out. Okay. Bottom. I had a hundred and fifty bucks. I know I had a rope. I had made it. Don't look down. 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 I'd go with something like that. Smaller. Yeah. They make How much do I get paid for checking for wall? <laughs> oh, we don't get paid for checking for wall. <laughs> they won't be up there. They'll be in that little, that little cup around, around with the perfect right column. Woo-hoo! Like oh, oh, my God! God. Like we were all elated that Bridget had overcome her fear of heights. And when she was happy, it made us all happy because as a group, we like to cheer each other on. We like to encourage each other and inspire each other to do the things that they're afraid of and overcome their fears. And that's part of being a, a wildlife woman. Stays on that. Stays on and now stand up and you can come to a little draw. Well, let's not get too excited yet. <laughs> You're all right. Okay. X stands are solid. Safety jaw system. Latches to the tree, three points of contact with an X stand tree stand. I highly recommend using this lifeline. It's made a world of difference of the fear that I had, especially transferring myself over from the top of the ladder to the sitting in the seat. The safety jaw system, the strap on the back of the stand, where it locks into it. And as you'll notice, look at this. We're not against the tree. Oh, okay. You yeah. don't have the discomfort of leaning against the tree or the wobbling of leaning against the tree. They're offset. And then the third point of contact are the cables down at the bottom of the stand. How far are we up? No, don't tell me till I get down. <laughs> okay. No. We are 20 <laughs> foot up. Woo! In an X stand, Jayhawk. Now, could right. you sit here all day in this thing? Yes, I think I could. <laughs> These tree stands are the bomb. There's so much room, the platform is huge, and that's one of the things that always scared me is my feet hung over a platform, my tail didn't fit the seat right. These tree stands are so roomy and so comfortable, it's no different than sitting at home and watching that butt go across your TV screen. I'm telling you guys, if y'all want to come up here, and, and I would like everybody Somebody that else wants to, climb, to try want to climb it. I want to try it. The Some... bad part about it is people go to sleep. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I'll tell you guys, really comfortable. It is really good. It is.
My breathing has slowed down. My heart is at a normal pace. You come down. You got your right here. Add it and so this would hold your gun? Mm -hmm. And then it's adjustable on the side right here to the hunter that would to be in the stand. Yeah, you just tighten the little rails over there if you want it up and down. If you're a bow hunter, we just lower our heads <laughs> down and put it behind us. <laughs> it's great for our youth hunts, too. Oh, so yeah. Father and son or ever who, you know, mother, daughter, whatever. It's, it's fantastic because it's, it's roomy. It's not, you don't feel like you're sitting like you. Okay. They come with cup holders. I mean, they think of Oh, everything. yeah, look at this. It's this soft. Is, right here is where we put our wind sensors. You know, I, I use chalk, old-fashioned, what style still, but, I mean, it'll hold uh, just your range finder, anything you want to get too quick, and water, you know. They think of everything. They are solid uh, steel. They're just uh, they're the best stand on the market. Two things. We want our hunters to be safe and we want them to be comfortable because when you're hunting in the rut, you need to hunt all day long. Yeah. And you can sit in this thing all day. Yeah, you can. The back's really comfortable. Feels Way good. Away from that tree yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank wow. you. <laughs> you're welcome. Good job, girl. <laughs> Thank you. Want to climb it? I'm just sitting here. <laughs> so, for the first time, I could focus on hunting instead of my fear of tree stands. Opening day is a finish line to a race that started months prior. A race consisting of dedication, determination, and preparation. Resulting in blood, sweat, and anticipation. So when that moment of opportunity presents itself, you can draw peacefully, knowing your time, energy, and preparation started with Rackology. Everything you need, all in one bag. social media queen of wildlife women, I did have to teach Michael Leachman how to do a selfie because he sure didn't know how to do one. I'm teaching trying to Michael take a one. selfie like I'm wildlife women. I'm teaching him how to do a selfie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now what, what'd you say? I said wait, I'm wait, trying wait, to wait, take a on, selfie on, like you wildlife women. <laughs> All right, see, you gotta hold it high. Yep. So you can look good yeah. and you gotta suck I, I, in. You know, don't, don't you gotta turn in. it around? Yeah, you gotta turn See, it around. See, I was taking a picture at that plane. <laughs> where I wasn't even turn anything. the lens around. Okay, there you go. Now see? Do I gotta put my hip out like that? Yeah. <laughs> put your hand on your hip. Don't drop your phone. See, you gotta use your hand and hold it. You know. Up high. <laughs> Does suck my gut in? Yeah. yeah. Suck your gut in. Oh Smile you pretty. Know. You know. That way when you're up high, you look better. You gotta get the sun on your face. I don't know about that. <laughs> So now it's time for the archery competition. And I'm really excited because I'm thinking I may be the most tenured archer. However, I have not picked up my bow since last hunting season. So I'm sizing up my competition and who else may be an archery shooter. I really, really want this tree stand and it's something I never thought would ever come out of my mouth. So I've shot my bow before, but down here at Tad Lads, the guys and were really helpful and actually had me shooting out farther at 20 yards. I'd only done about 10 or 15, and they were able to help me get a little more confident and sight my bow in, and I was able to hit 20 and hit it good. 20 yard pin, yes. Yeah. Your second one is definitely your 20 yard pin, and your third one down there is your 40 yard pin. Lord, I can't even see it. Oh, up there. I was looking down there, I'm like, where's the third one? Some of the girls had never shot before. Deep breath and do whatever you want to do. Whoever wins this archery competition is walking away with the egg stand tree stand. I'm going to suck at it. Poor old Melissa shooting arrows in the ground. I'm thinking I got this. 
That's why, why I'm at Tad Lads though, is to learn and practice. Because like I said, and I'll say it again, I'm a gun girl, I'm not much of a bow girl, I was never brought up around bows, and I've just got into bows within the last couple of years because of wildlife women. Okay, with the uh, 230. Kelly won a uh, blind this morning. There you go. What? You had to guess the number. I didn't do too hot while shooting my bow at Tad's, but that's okay, because I'm still learning. than you are gun. I'm feeling pretty confident. I've shot really good. I'm very close to the bullseye. And next comes up Lisa Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> Drill that old target right in the center. Hold a little bit higher than you was while ago. Lisa Tucker is a very good archer, and in the end, it comes down to her and I shooting against one another. <laughs> the next two shots are a tie, and we have to reshoot again. Pretty good shot, Bridget. I can't see where it went. <laughs> I really want this tree stand, and Lisa is making it very difficult for me. I got you. Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> yes, there it was. There you go. <laughs> now she's back. <laughs> so it's my turn to shoot, and I make a pretty good shot that I'm very happy with. I walk away and just breathe because I think this tree stand is mine. Next, it's Lisa's turn. She gets one more shot to see if she can beat my bullseye. Back under pressure. No, no. Oh. Take your time and do just what you did a while ago. She's drawing back and I'm thinking, no way, no way, no way. Please let me win this stand. You did it, girl. Good job. <laughs> you did center punch it. So I didn't win. Lisa outshot me. I'm pretty sad. But now I just have to go buy my own X stand. I may buy two. Our chapter leader from Bracken County, Lisa Tucker, I will have to admit, she's a pretty good archer. So she ended up walking away with the egg stand tree stand. Here's normal internet speed. Here's the broadband difference. Average speed, broadband. Not enough speed, broadband speed. With broadband from Thacker Grigsby Communications, everything's different. Video streams with no buffering, music and photos fly, gaming gets real, and nobody's left hanging. Experience the broadband difference. Contact Thacker Grigsby Communications and TVS Cable today. We got one more thing to give to Mr. Ted Lad for all his hospitality here this weekend. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure so, having you. We expect you to wear it during hunting season. 
Oh yeah, the orange shirt. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we all we all back. back. We all oh. back. <laughs> so. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank y'all very much. Do you like it? Like it? I love wildlife women. <laughs> you like that play on it? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it is. We man. might as well play it because so we got one for little. Michael and uh, Ron and the rest of your staff, Larry and, and Dylan and oh, and all man. the guys and. Uh, man, man, yeah. man! Here, hey, yeah. I enjoyed oh, having you. Enjoy it <laughs> it's a pleasure so running much. into you, you at the NWTF, man. I hope oh, you like we it. loved having. We loved being y'all here. Y'all were perfect. Every little thing y'all will tell us uh, about it, we'll just. Absolutely. Help us going further. So thank you, thank you. Love thank having you. you. Hope you come back. Making an Thanks, annual thing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Try you to awesome. grow it and grow it and grow it. Wildlife women. Yeah. Woo I think this weekend at Tad Lads has proved to me that um, wildlife women is for all ages, um, all genres of women, people from um, all walks of life, whether you know anything about hunting or if you're an avid hunter, it's um, for everyone. The weekend at Tad Lads was one of the best weekends that I have had. It was with a group of women. We all had the same likes, the same thoughts on different things. We shared our different experiences. Tad let us use his beautiful facility there. It was as nice as any place that I've ever stayed. And... It was in the outdoors, it was relaxing, the camaraderie was there, it was wonderful, the food was wonderful. It was one of the most relaxing weekends that I've ever spent with a group of women, and I look forward to going back this year. Hey guys, it's Bridget and Melissa. Wildlife Women has had the privilege to spend the weekend at Tad Lads West Kentucky Whitetails. Yes. We cannot say enough about this place. I mean, all our girls, we had what, 10? 10 girls? 10. Ten girls. Uh -huh. Ten girls come and uh, and to, to learn all these wonderful aspects about hunting. We've done classroom setting seminars on hands on hands and hands on. Yes, absolutely with pistols and and rifles and mm -hmm. uh, bow shooting. We did some bow shooting. It gave ATV us some be riding. Absolutely gave us some amazing prizes. The girls won stuff oh, with the skills they learned here. Mm -hmm. It's an awesome establishment. If you are looking for any place to go to do some um, whitetail hunting or even some turkey hunting, you need to give Tad Lads a look. You need to look up on his website or give him a call and uh, try to get out there and use his place to hunt on. So the people here are amazing. They're hospitable. Mm -hmm. They are knowledgeable. They're willing to share what, they, what they've what they learned in their years of hunting, and they're patient. That's the, the biggest yeah. thing I want to say is for you ladies that are trying to learn to hunt, this place is amazing. Uh, we're hoping to do this every year, so come join us. They are so patient with us, and a lot of us had never shot bows, shot guns. Right. Everybody was new at something. I was new at climbing a tree stand, so it was <laughs> it was an amazing thing, but I did well, I was it. Too. I was too. I've never oh, owned a tree absolutely, stand. Absolutely. I don't own a tree stand. I own a barn. Yeah, house, yeah. So, so we got a, we overcame fears this weekend. Uh -huh. We all accomplished something with very few battle scars, maybe a couple, but yeah. uh, it was a great weekend. That's part of it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it was a great weekend, and we all left here feeling accomplished, feeling like yes. family. You guys gotta come here. Mm -hmm. Try it out. I mean, they are very patient people and yeah. they are willing to work with anybody and everybody. Had a great time. It was hot that weekend. Oh, it was so hot and we were outside for a lot of it. But you know, sitting around hanging out with all the girls, it still was fun. It was still a good time. It was, you know, still getting away from the kids, the husbands, the jobs, the phones, and just being able to relax and just laugh and cut up and crack up and have a good time. He's hosted us here on his property and, and provided us with all kinds of hunting seminars and we've shot, we've uh, shot guns and bows, climbed tree stands and I just wanna thank Tad for everything he's done and tell y'all a little bit about his property and say all y'all need to schedule hunts out here with Tad Ladd, Western Kentucky Whitetails. <laughs> well, I tell you Bridget, it was an absolute pleasure having the, the group down here. I mean, that's what hunting is all about is sharing our experiences, knowledge, anything that we can impart to anyone to make everyone a better hunter because in the end we all want to be the best version of ourselves if we can. Absolutely. We've had a wonderful weekend, I'm telling you, it's just we've laughed, we've, uh, like you said, we've shot guns, we've shot bows, we've been on both ranges, and I believe that uh, the soft opening that we had with you guys is, is going to be invaluable to us moving forward. We've got a pretty nice place here. 
Absolutely. <laughs> we've got a bathroom in every bedroom. Hey, they have thought of everything. You ladies that are hunters or want to come with your husbands, you can even shave your legs in the shower. <laughs> There's USB ports. I mean, this place is immaculate and it's better than anywhere I've ever stayed. Uh, the hospitality's been amazing. We've had classes on food plotting, uh, uh, tracking, uh, coming in and out of a stand, which is something I definitely learned learned a whole lot about. We've overcome fears. <laughs> right. We've overcome so. fears. We've climbed stands, uh, the egg stand tree stands, which the cabin we're sitting on the porch of right now. We we put on the safety lines and, and just showed you, you know, the, the measure we go to to ensure our guests are number one comfortable and number two safe. Right. Well, you can't beat this at Tad Lad, so take it away. <laughs> hey, we uh, you know we we work year round at this. Uh, we're managing right at seven thousand acres right now. We're all packed up and ready to go home after a great weekend at Tad's place. We have learned so much. We have ate till our bellies are full. We've had great bonding, met some new ladies, and really built some amazing friendships. Tad has been an amazing host. The staff was wonderful. I highly recommend y'all visit his property out in Western Kentucky. I'm, I, blah, blah.